Welcome back to our channel. Today, we're diving deep into one of the most perplexing challenges in ICU settings, effectively treating nosocomial CNS infections. Nature has equipped our brain and spinal cord with protective barriers, but guess what? They're so good at their job that they often keep out the very medications designed to help us. So what do you do when you're up against drug-resistant bacteria? Intrathecal administration could be our last line of defense. This is the cutting-edge info you won't want to miss, so stick around and let's get into it. How anatomy and physiology affect efficacy of intrathecal antibiotics. The complex structure of the CSF compartment results in non-homogeneous distribution. Oscillations in CSF flow linked to heartbeats and respiration can facilitate the equilibration of intrathecal antibiotics, potentially optimizing their efficacy. The slow growth of pathogens in the CNS due to limited nutrients and an acidic environment may affect the pharmacodynamics of antibiotics, necessitating adjustments in drug regimen. Antibiotics that are time and concentration dependent may exhibit different efficacy profiles in the CNS compared to systemic usage, requiring customized therapeutic approaches. Antibiotics that should not be given intrathecally. Antibiotics that pass the blood-brain that which are neurotoxic, those with epileptogenic potencies, low-toxicity drugs where high doses can be given IV. Recent studies demonstrate that intrathecal colistin, aminoglycosides, and vancomycin is same. A multi-center retrospective analysis of 105 patients, 90% CSF culture sterilization. Overall in hospital mortality was 18.1%. RCT with 10 patients showed that intraventricular vancomycin effectively cleared bacteria from CSF. RCT in infants was terminated prematurely due to a higher mortality rate, 42.9% vs 12.5%, in the intraventricular therapy group. A meta-analysis covering 11 studies and 348 adult patients found that intraventricular plus intravenous therapy was superior to intravenous therapy alone in the eradication of pathogens and reducing infectious and overall mortality, specifically in cases involving carbapenem-resistant bacteria. For infections caused by other types of bacteria, the combined therapy did not show superiority. Intraventricular injection ensures drug distribution throughout the CSF space. Intralumbar injection leads to less homogeneous drug distribution. Prone positioning for 60 minutes after lumbar administration increased ventricular concentrations of methotrexate. This approach hasn't been studied with anti-infectives. Hydrophilic compounds have a VCSF equal to the volume of the CSF plus a fraction of the extracellular space of the brain. Lipophilic drugs have a larger VCSF compared to hydrophilic compounds. Elimination factors in hydrophilic and lipophilic compounds. Hydrophilic molecules primarily use CSF bulk flow for elimination. These are slower to clear in hydrocephalic patients compared to those with a normal ventricle size. Small, lipophilic molecules may also be cleared by retrograde diffusion and active transport. However, active transport is generally negligible for most anti-infective drugs. Lipophilic clear faster. Aminoglycosides. Used intrathecally, hydrophilic with approximately 500 grams per mole MW. Gentamicin, tobramycin, netilmycin, amikacin are suitable for intrathecal therapy. Lowest resistance in amikacin. Adverse effects. Hearing loss, seizures, aseptic meningitis, painful radiculitis, CSF eosinophilia. Gentamicin. Usual dose, 4 to 10 milligrams once daily. T1 half CSF in lumbar CSF. 6H. Tobramycin. Similar pharmacokinetics to gentamicin. Netilmycin. Doses up to 150 mg twice daily. Rapid CSF sterilization, but associated with patients' deteriorating status on the 10th day. Amikacin. Estimated VCSF. 0.027 to 0.41 liters. Administered up to 100 mg per day intrathecally. Side effects. high tone hearing impairment and transient vomiting. Streptomycin. No longer part of standard therapy for CNS tuberculosis. Adverse effects. Deafness, epileptic seizures. Daptomycin. Used intraventricularly for multiresistant efacium and S. epidermidis ventriculitis. Doses. 
5 to 10 mg once daily in adults. CSF half-life, approximately 2.8 hour. Glycopeptides, vancomycin, commonly used for intrathecal injections. Poor penetration through blood CSF and blood-brain barriers. Intraventricular doses, 10 to 20 mg every 24 hour. CSF half-life varies, 2 to 20.5 hour. Tycoplanin, rarely used intraventricularly. Applied doses, 5 to 20 mg daily. CSF trough levels after 24 hour, above 2 mg per liter. Quinupristin delphapristin, doses, 1 mg, 2 mg, 4 mg intraventricularly once daily. CSF half-life, 1.2 hour for quinupristin, 0.25 hour for delphapristin. Potential for high frequency of adverse effects. Tigacycline, intrathecal doses, up to 10 mg twice daily. Clearance from CSF expected to be greater than that of vancomycin or colistin. Intraventricular administration generally well tolerated. CSF half-life not consistently determined, but appears to be short. Amphotericin B, large, moderately lipophilic compound. Poor CSF penetration, approximately 0.05 mg per liter. Substantial neurotoxicity including arachnoiditis and Parkinson's syndrome. Intraventricular administration found effective in cryptococcal meningitis. Used in both aqueous and liposome encapsulated forms. Caspofungin, large, water-soluble lipopeptide. Poor CNS penetration with intravenous therapy. Limited clinical experience, but promising results in select cases of CNS fungal infections. Colistin and its prodrug, colistin methanosulfonate, are crucial for treating CNS infections caused by carbapenemase-producing bacteria. Polymyxins show potential pro-inflammatory and neurotoxic properties in experimental settings. Some adverse effects like meningeal irritation have been reported, but they are usually dose-dependent and not irreversible. If you found this information valuable and want to stay updated on the latest in critical care and antimicrobial therapies, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Indications and duration of intrathecal anti-infective therapy IDSA guidelines suggest intrathecal anti-infectives for patients with healthcare-associated ventriculitis and meningitis poorly responsive to systemic therapy. Decision for intrathecal therapy is based on susceptibility testing and drug ability to reach required CSF concentrations. Prophylactic intrathecal antibiotics are not supported for external ventriculostomy complications. Sterile techniques and intravenous prophylaxis are advised. Duration is individualized, generally 48 to 72 hours post-sterile CSF cultures, or 10 to 14 days after last positive culture if repeated positives occur. Dosing recommendations guidelines are often expert consensus due to lack of randomized studies. Intraventricular dosing is preferred over lumbar CSF injections. Dosages should allow agent equilibration in the CSF and should be adjusted based on several factors like CSF antimicrobial concentrations, ventricular size, and daily output. Pharmaceutical prerequisites drugs should be sterile, pyrogen-free, endotoxin-free, and free of foreign particles. Should be dissolved in water or sterile sodium chloride solution with no added color agents. Only colistin methanosulfonate is licensed for intrathecal application in the U.S. and E.U. Adjunctive treatments neuroendoscopic lavage in children reduced the incidence of shunt revision and reinfection. Intraventricular lavage with colistin solution until pus-free output is achieved has been employed. In the presence of an intraventricular blood clot, intraventricular fibrinolysis may be considered as a last resort.